Most everyone has seen an earthworm wriggling on the ground or in the soil. This seemingly simple animal has an amazingly complex anatomy. In this lab, we will examine an earthworm's external anatomy. Then we will dissect it to explore its internal anatomy. The earthworm is a segmented worm. We can see that its body is divided into many segments. The earthworm is also a clitellate worm, which means it has a clitellum. The clitellum aids the worm in reproduction. We need to identify the anterior and posterior regions of the worm. At first glance, it may seem that both ends of the earthworm are the same, but the anterior end is the one closest to the clitellum. The mouth is located at the anterior end of the worm in the first segment. The posterior end is the end farthest from the clitellum. The earthworm's anus is located in the last posterior segment. We also need to identify the dorsal and ventral sides of the earthworm because we will make our incisions on the dorsal side. The dorsal side is darker than the ventral side. Most of the earthworm's internal organs are located in the anterior portion of the worm. To avoid damaging internal organs, we will stick a pin into the worm's side and push the pin into the pad beneath the worm. Next, we stretch the worm out in a straight line and stick a second pin into the worm's posterior region. Since we will not be examining the organs in its posterior region, we can stick the pin straight in. To hold the worm in place while we begin our incisions, we will place one more pin in the anterior region. We use the scalpel to make a short transverse incision in the dorsal surface, just behind the clitellum. Next, we use the scissors to make a medial incision to the anterior end. To prevent damage to internal organs, we want to cut through the epidermis and cuticle without cutting too deeply. Most of the earthworm's organs are contained in a hollow body tube called a coelom, which is surrounded by a thin epidermis and cuticle. Between each segment of the earthworm is a transverse wall of tissue called a septum. The septa also hold the organs in place. We need to cut the septa from the skin so we can open up the worm to see its internal organs. Before we can cut the septa, we need to stick another pin into the worm. As before, we place the pin through the skin on the side of the worm to avoid further damage to the internal organs. Next, we hold the skin on the opposite side with the forceps and use the scalpel to cut away the septa a little at a time. After cutting several of the septa, a section of the skin is released, so we need to pin down that skin to hold it in place. Notice that we are sticking the pins in at about a 45 degree angle. This will expose the coelom, but keep the pins out of the way. Now that we have opened up the coelom, it is easier to see a septum, which is this clear transverse wall of tissue. Now, we repeat the procedure on the opposite side. We do not need to open the worm up any more than this, because all the internal organs we intend to examine are located in the anterior region. With the coelom opened up, we can see the earthworm's digestive system. An earthworm feeds on dirt, which passes from the mouth into the pharynx. From the pharynx, food passes into the esophagus, but we cannot see the esophagus because it is hidden beneath other organs. After passing through the esophagus, food enters the crop the gizzard, and the intestine, which extends the rest of the length of the worm. Solid waste, called castings, are expelled through the anus at the posterior end of the worm. Earthworms are beneficial to plants because earthworm castings fertilize the soil. Since earthworms are beneficial to plants, they are also important to farmers. 
A worm does not have a complex nervous system, but it does have several sets of ganglia that carry on some of the functions of a brain. Beneath the pharynx and slightly behind the cerebral ganglia are the visceral ganglia. The main nerve that carries impulses to and from the visceral ganglia is the ventral nerve cord. To see the ventral nerve cord, we need to lift up the intestine with the forceps and cut it free from the septa with the scalpel. This white line of tissue is the ventral nerve cord. It runs the length of the worm from the visceral ganglia to the posterior end. An earthworm is hermaphroditic which means it produces both male and female gametes. These light-colored structures are the testicles, which produce sperm. These structures are the seminal receptacles, which store sperm from another worm. The ovaries and oviduct are beneath the esophagus, so we cannot see them. The ovaries produce ova, or eggs. An earthworm does not have a respiratory system because it takes in oxygen and releases carbon dioxide through its skin. However, it does have a simple circulatory system consisting of five pairs of muscle-lined blood vessels called aortic arches, a ventral blood vessel, and a dorsal blood vessel. The first aortic arch is found in the worm's sixth segment. The other aortic arches are located in segments seven through 10. Some of the arches are hidden beneath the seminal receptacles. Blood is pumped from the aortic arches into the ventral blood vessel, which is hidden beneath the intestine. Blood returns to the aortic arches through the dorsal blood vessel. The next time you see an earthworm, remember the amazing complexity that was placed in this invertebrate to help it survive. And remember the impact this invertebrate has on the rest of the world. In our next lab, we will explore the anatomy of another invertebrate, the crayfish. At this time, proceed with the corresponding activities.